this is David of the Savage Experience. I'm here at MacFest 10 with Joey DeSena, that's Rue of Clan of the Great Wolf. Joey, I'm glad that you're here. Hey, it's good to be here. Yep. Now, to begin with, it's, what was the first game that you remember ever playing? I don't know if you'd call it a game, but when I was, I don't know, four years old or so, my parents got a PC, an IBM PC, this is mid-80s, dating myself, with Sticky Bear Reading. Oh, I remember. <laughs> That's really random. And I had that game too, actually. Yeah, well, it, it helped. I can read now, so I fully credit Sticky Bear. Um, and then beyond that was Microsoft Flight Simulator. I, yeah, being like three, four years old, I had no clue. Uh, past that, though, first game, like real good, like video game I can remember playing is actually, this is trite, but Super Mario Brothers in an arcade. Oh. Uh, and I played that, and I was feeding chords into it. it. Took me forever to learn how to jump over the first pit, and then the second pit. It's like the run jump. Holy crap! That blew my mind. Um, and I played that for months in the arcade before I went to a friend's house, and he pulled out an NES and started playing Super Mario Brothers. And you can play this at home? Holy crap! And then, of course, the Christmas after that was Christmas of NES because I go home. I must have this. So, yeah, long answer for that one. So, because it's actually funny that you mentioned with arcade, so do you have a preference more towards the atmosphere of the arcade, or do you still prefer, like, home consoles? I mostly prefer home consoles, uh, because, a lot, well, growing up, RPGs were my favorite. That's hard to do in an arcade. I mean, but it is fun. If you can, if you can get a group of friends together and play something like Sunset Riders or Ninja Turtles, the arcade game, I and mean, what they have here at MagFest is... It's so much fun. Uh, of course, it doesn't hurt that it's all free play. Yeah. Not but. to mention two <laughs> six-player X-Men arcades. What? Yeah, it's... He's trying to be quiet about that one, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because everyone's like, wait, what? Because then that awful Colossus noise will start again. Yes. Oh, wait, it already has started. It had never stops, really. So, so, as a reviewer, who are your influences? Okay, well, the two biggest ones are probably, again, trite, but James Rolfe, Angry Video Game Nerd. Um, I mean, I enjoy his character and so forth, but what really kind of turned me on to the informative style of, review, of reviewing uh, was I think his, uh, I want to say Ghostbusters. He had a, a little feature, a set of videos, and I learned a lot of stuff about the different games and so forth. It wasn't just this is a pile of shit. I mean, it was that too. Yeah. But, you know, it was also informative. Like, wow, yeah. this, is, this is an interesting teaching tool, just making videos on the internet. And then also uh, Spoonie. Noah uh, Antweiler, because um, I, I got him, I got into him really early on, and what I appreciate most from him was the conversational style mm -hmm. of his reviews. It's like you could feel like, hey, this is a guy that, like any schmo or nerdy schmo that I, I could have been friends with in high school and gotten together and play games with. I try to kind of fuse like an informative yet conversational style. And here you go. Here's a third one outside the reviewing world. <coughs> if you're familiar with Alton Brown, from oh, Big Eats, definitely. Uh, well, after I did my Earthbound retrospective, uh, Reed Young, who's co-founder of Starman.net, got back to me and said, you are the Alton Brown of video game reviewing. And I was like, that is the greatest compliment ever, because I'm a big fan of Alton Brown. He, if you're not familiar, he's, um, he has a cooking show on Food Network, and he, like, uh, he doesn't just do the recipes. He does the recipes, but he also explains the... Uh, the science behind it and why things happen the way they do and I was like that's that's the that's the style after that I've tried to emulate them more actually uh, and so three big influences there so what made you decide to do 16-bit gems 16-bit has been that era is, is like the golden era of 2d platforming for, or 2d gaming because that's the last era really where companies uh, all made 2D games. I mean, they all of their the major focus of their budgets were for 2D gaming because 3D gaming really didn't exist in any real form, uh, at least on home consoles. So you had great productions like Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger. Uh, you know, like Square at their peak. You know, uh, Nintendo, some would say at their peak, and so forth. And Super Nintendo has always been my favorite system. Uh, because of that. I mean, also probably, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of rose-tinted nostalgia factor there because that's, that was a time like right before high school where I had a lot of time to play video games and, you know, I had the paper route so I could buy the video games <laughs> and stuff like that. So I, I actually, I think my original Super Nintendo collection was something like 50 games, so 
uh, I spent a lot of time with that system. Genesis 2. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. It's uh, once a game you're frequently requested to cover, yet you don't like. I don't like. <sighs> that or you just don't think that it's a 16-bit gem that might be good, but it's not worth it. I don't... I'm sure there is at least one that's been covered, that's been suggested that I don't like, but I can't recall off the top of my head because most people, when they suggest a game, it's it's a good one. I mean, why would they suggest a shitty game, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, normally, when someone suggests a gem, and I have to, and normally I'll just take them and put them in a big long list and say, yeah, I'll look into that one if, you, if I haven't heard of it. Uh, I'll look into it later. But normally, I like a lot of people suggest Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI, and I'm like. Yeah, I know those are amazing games and some of my favorites, but uh, I, I mean, that's not the point of the show, right? Yeah. They've already been covered to death. Right, exactly. You know how great they are. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, you know, inform people like, hey, you probably didn't give this one a shot back in the day, you know, if you were even alive. There's a surprising yeah. amount of people who seem to like the show that are like teenagers. They were not alive then, and they're, and it's kind of heartening, you know, it's not just the nostalgia speaking on these things. They, they come back and I have a 15 year old come up and say, oh yeah, I really liked um, Terra Enigma or something like that. And it's like, so yeah, okay, good. I'm not just imagining this, good. But uh, what was the question initially? <laughs> well, it's just like, what was the game that it oh, was oh, so, 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 like, that you just didn't feel like it was worthy of a 16 bit jam? So so yeah, normally if it's if it's something that's really overexposed or, or yeah, overexposed, I'll say no. Or, and I don't necessarily believe in dibs, so to speak, like, oh, this reviewer already did it, so I'm gonna stay away from it. But I kinda try to stay away from ones that have been done really well, uh, and I feel like I can't add anything to it. I've had a few people uh, ask me to do like Sparkster or something like that, and I say, look, you really need to see the ha Derek Alexander Happy Video Game Nerd, because I wasn't a big, f I didn't really play a lot of Sparkster as a kid, he obviously did, and he's a big fan, and he did great videos on it. I can't improve on that at all. Um, the only one I had to say I have to do was Earthbound, and uh, even though I knew he did it first, but because one of my favorite games, I just had to couldn't stay away from that one. But <laughs> normally, otherwise. Now I have a question that's actually non-gaming related. And oh, that is bye. in your oh, bye bye. <laughs> now <I'll conclude. laughs> no. But the question is, is that in your uh, stream during the uh, mm. Clan of the Grey Wolf uh, charity the, for cancer research and stuff, which one of, you know, thank you for holding that. Oh, that's no problem. Thanks for being there and, and donating generously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. welcome. It's in it that you started, you and uh, your friends started talking about uh, sports. You're mm -hmm. talking about uh, football, and then we joked around. I was like, why don't we talk about baseball? <laughs> so my question is, is there a market for a sports talk show that is specifically aimed towards nerds and not like sports nerds but maybe somebody who's getting interested in it like the gaming to try to get them over to watching sports i think so and i've seen some of that uh, i think uh lord cat has been uh, and rollo t uh have done a little bit of um turducken is tasty i think was their football podcast or something there's a bit of crossover there and nerdiness obviously but i mean a sport like you said you said the term sports nerd and that's so true I mean, what is fantasy football besides an elaborate real-life role-playing game, you know, with the stats and everything? There's a lot of angst amongst sports nerds and nerd nerds, <laughs> gaming nerds for lack of a better term, but, yeah. but uh, I think if people kind of got over that, I mean, you're obviously a big sports fan. I, oh, yeah. I enjoy my fair share of sports. Yeah. You know, if people kind of just put aside the biases or whatever you want to call it, I, I, I think there's definitely uh, a market for that. So. And my last question is, and this is this pertains to Earthbound, which mm -hmm. if anyone hasn't seen his History of Earthbound, it is one of the best videos, not only concerning Earthbound, but one of the best videos concerning video games. It's a masterpiece of knowledge and humor. Obviously, you love the game, and it shows. I appreciate that. Thank you. So, this is, doesn't pertain to me, but okay. what if Earthbound doesn't give the audience an unmitigated boner? That happens. I've had some few people say, I tried it. And I just didn't love it. And I mean, I said before to play it is to love it. And that's because for the most part it really is. But some people just don't get into it for whatever reason. That's fine. I mean, there, there's, there's no law that you have to love every guy. I mean, it's a, all about opinions, right? Mm -hmm. Just because, but I would say vast majority of people that I know have played Earthbound really, really enjoy it. It's so quirky and entertaining and the music's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. 
And so for most people, that turns, flips all the right switches in the happy center of the brain or something. But if it doesn't give them an unmitigated boner, then eh, that's fine too. I mean, it, <laughs> all, people, all people are different. I'm not going to get all, raw, are you, why you suck, you know, kind of thing. But And, and I think as some people should probably realize about most anything, uh, there's differing opinions on everything. Thank you very much, though, for your time, though. I hope you have a great time at MacFest 10. I already am. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, like, have, continue to have a great weekend, man. Thanks for having me.